gifted and honored actresses in America. Uh, she's now cavorting on Broadway in 40 carats, or cavorting on 40 carats. <laughs> Plays on words are very popular these days, uh, <laughs> but not here. <laughs> you probably remember that she made history in her portrayal of a 12-year-old when she was at least twice that age and member of a wedding. A member of the wedding, I mean. Will you welcome Julie Harris? <laughs> as well sit in the guest of honors chair Thank for a while. Did. Somebody, who was it wrote about you that on stage you were a flame, but off stage you were a wisp of smoke? Do you remember that? I think it was John Van Truten. J right. Yes. During I'm a Camera, probably. Yes. Something like that. He also called me a glass of water. <laughs> but, he, he makes his but, metaphors, But I he? loved him for saying those things because he was really saying that I was like, um, like a wisp of smoke that you were hardly conscious of of me uh, being there and suddenly I was given the ingredients of a part and I became something else. Right. So it was a nice wisp of smoke, not the kind that makes yes, you strangle and cough. Yes, I thought so. And I love John, so yeah. anything he called me was fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, you, did I miss something? <laughs> Do you actively avoid the uh, trappings of stardom? Well, when you say that, I think of um, great stars like uh, Sarah Bernhardt mm -hmm. and uh, oh, who else? Well, uh, well, any of the flamboyant film people. Anyway, uh, somebody uh, like Sarah Bernhardt mm -hmm. who uh, was known for her uh, uh, exploits, uh, say she, she was famous for having a coffin in the dressing room where she would retire to the coffin with long tapers on either side and hold a lily in her hand and compose herself before a play. Yeah, she really freaked well, out, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> or she was always famous for having strange animals like baby elephants and cobras and pythons. I think mm. a python ate her favorite little dog and she was horrified to have the python killed. Or maybe it was an alligator, but she she had lots of those. Well, I've, I've, I must say, <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little shy about going into that kind of menagerie. Yeah. When you were a kid, dreaming of being an actress, uh, did, did any of the glamour appeal to you then, and it doesn't now? Or yes, did, it, did it, it never. It, I, I forgot to say, really, that appeals to me. Oh, it does. But I haven't got the guts or the courage to carry it out. Uh -huh. I'd love to. Uh, I remember reading about Miss Bernhardt once. She went to a cafe, with, and only her. Um, um, she decided at the spur of the moment, uh, say it was a Sunday afternoon at home, and uh, she'd been resting all day, and she only had her uh, nightgown on, and she threw over it her um, opera-length uh, chinchilla coat and uh, went to a cafe. And there, I think, there was something. She met an, an actor who, uh, uh, who wanted to uh, take her out to dinner, but she really couldn't go home because she was in her nightgown. <laughs> did, you, did you ever... How, wait, when did she die? How long ago? Uh, well, it must have been... Bernhardt? In the early That's 1900s. Yeah. Because she made several farewell tours. tours. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And I think it went in... I'd say about 1910. I'm not sure. You, know, you never saw her on the stage? Then. No, I never did. But I've heard a record, yeah. a recording of her voice. Yeah. Uh, did you ever get so into a role that you do take it home with you the way they say that Charles Lawton used to be tyrannical when he was playing a tyrant uh, or nasty when he's playing a nasty part at home. Uh, does this happen? I know it's a cliche question, but I wonder if it happens to you. Well, I know I was playing um, uh, a chambermaid, a rather, a rather s sexy chambermaid in a play called A Shot in the Dark. Mm -hmm. And for the first time in my life, I liked uh, perfume. I bought myself perfume, which I had never done before. Yeah. So, and then, of course, when I was uh, in a play um, like The Lark, I was playing uh, Joan of Arc, I was uh, terribly conscious in my, own, in my own life of simplicity, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't like a lot of, you know, I didn't pay much attention to clothes at that time. So it probably does affect you. So it probably does. Yeah. Gee, could you do something for us? I know that this isn't a, a totally surprise to you, but um, and you don't have to if you don't want to. But I know you do those. I've seen you do Emily Dickinson poems occasionally in public, and uh, you do them so beautifully. Well, thank would you, you Dick. Be would, able to do one? would you like? Um, 
a happy one or a sad one? Because to me, she was, she had, uh, she, uh, Emily was both things, you know. She, she had a happy spirit and she had also a tragic side to her nature. Um, I'd like to do one that I think is uh, one of her great poems. Uh, it's a little sad, but that's all right. Hope it can follow the monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Would you do that one for us? Okay. I measure every grief I meet with analytic eyes. I wonder if it weighs like mine or has an easier size. I wonder if they bore it long or did it just begin? I could not tell the date of mine. It feels so old a pain. I wonder if it hurts to live and if they have to try and whether could they choose between. It would not be to die. I note that some gone patient long at length renew their smile, an imitation of a light that has so little oil. I wonder if when years have heaped some thousands on the harm that hurt them early, such a lapse could give them any balm, or would they go on aching still through centuries of nerve, enlightened to a larger pain in contrast to the love. The grieved are many, I am told. There is the various cause. Death is but one and comes but once and only nails the eyes. There's grief of want and grief of cold, a sort they call despair. There's banishment from native eyes in sight of native air. And though I may not guess the kind correctly, yet to me, a piercing comfort it affords in passing cavalry to note the fashions of the cross and how they're mostly worn, still fascinated to presume that some are like my own. Miss Harris. Dick, please oh. call me Julie. <laughs> oh, I will, I will. Uh, I know that you have to go because uh, it's odd to be in a Broadway play that starts this late at night. It's after yes. 10 o'clock, but uh, thank you for coming by, thank and I'll you, see Dick. you again. So long.